All right, we're really excited to show you uh, the current release of the ServeMan mobile application for Android. Um, basically, when I log in as a technician, of course, we're not talking about the back office. We're just going to focus on this device. But I have the orders that are assigned to me. And if your technicians only get one order at a time, that would continue to be the case. But I click on that order, and that's going to open it up into the application. And so what I have is, this is the kind of the primary general information screen. I've got my order number, customer information, my work type request, contract information, and anything else that we want. We even have where we can add custom, uh, custom fields, which include checkboxes and other things down in here. Down across the bottom is my navigation, so I can go through. This is my home screen, back to this general information screen. I have my order detail, notes, equipment, service history, task, document attachments, capturing signatures, taking payments, contact information, uh, my total screen, and mapping if I want to get driving directions to this thing. So let's go ahead right now and start looking. So when, I, when, I, when I'm a technician, I get this thing. Usually what I'm doing is I'm looking at the address, maybe looking at the request, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm hit my status, and I'm going to go ahead and say, well, I'm on my way. That pulls up the screen. It actually syncs this, pushes it back to the office, and it does a um, lat long stamp of where the technician was when they said they were going in. So later you can actually go back and said, well, you went en route, but you're actually starting from your house. Okay, now we're on our way. We're driving. We get there. You'll notice I came off that en route uh, sign, and up at the top it tells me how long I've been en route. So now when I get there, of course, I would be going and I'd go to on site. Again, the same thing that happened when we went en route. It's going to push that back to the back office, and, and it's going to stamp the lat long of where the tech was when they said they were going in site. Now, very often when somebody's getting there, what they might want to do is pull a history on the account, saying, pop this up, simply hit this history, and it queries, sends a query to the back office, and it returns, and here's all the all of the uh, orders his, uh, historically that have been happened out there. Again, within each one of these uh, squares, we have the ability to return whatever you want for information. In ours, we've got the document information, order, the total value of it, what the request was, who did it, who the contact was, when it was originally scheduled, the equipment that was specifically worked on, this one's got equipment on it, and any flat rate codes, labor details, material details, um, equipment information, tax details, or notes that were associated with them. And those particular tickets didn't have any. So that's very, very cool. So now, very often when they're there, what they're going to want to do is go and do their discovery with the client. Notice up at the top, it's still clicking on site. We've been on site for one minute, three seconds. So now uh, the, the process we recommend is we want to make recommendations to the client. I can go right up here and I can say add edit quotes from the order. If I click that, basically it opens up a blank document which is going to be a quote and I can go in and I can detail it with everything that I'm going to recommend to the customer. We then come back to our truck or present that to our client and uh, they're going to say we'll do this and do that but don't do these other things. You can then convert from that quote back onto this order the thing, the specific transactions that the clients are going to have to do. So your ticket's in essence already detailed for you. Now anything that the customer did not take, what's going to happen is those are going to be synced back to the office where sales can then follow up on recommendations that were made by technicians but not performed. All right, so we're out there. We're back on our ticket. We have the ability to detail. So I can go to my detail. I can add labor, flat rate codes, materials, templates, everything that we have at the back office. How that works is I can press and hold. I can add from multiple items. I can put in different categories or I can put a description. I'll just let it run and pull back my big list. It gives me a list. I can check what I'm looking for. I can override the quantity. I could actually type the quantity right in there, by the way, if you had like big numbers that you were doing. But I can go in there and select multiple items. Now you notice I can accept and continue. That's very cool because if I was looking at a particular category and subcategory of items, I could pick what I wanted from that category, accept and continue. It just leaves me right here and then I could go do this all again. I'm just going to go ahead and say accept. 
Now it's going to take all those items and it's going to push those back into the detail section. So we see we had the detail that was on there originally and now we have more. I can edit any one of these items. So I can click and edit it. It opens it up. I can override my information if I have the rights to. But you see for system, I can also go out there and say, well, this was for this particular piece of equipment. And so what that does at the back office, for those of you that know, is that's going to tuck that component right up underneath that system record. And you're going to have a full history of the specific order invoice number that it was sold on and you can actually track the warranty on that thing embedded as a part as a component of a much larger system so that's very cool of course all of our time and you notice my travel information is all being logged here automatically by the software but I would log my flat rate codes and I'd log my labor so I'm tracking my time and materials to the ticket we can add notes I can add any number of notes so I'll go in there and add a note to the ticket you can have pre-built notes so I might go in there and say well I called and left a message save that note something that's cool about these I'll open this back up and pop my thing in here um, my cursor not a thing but I pop in there and I have the ability to do this text-to-speech that is very cool so if you've got fat fingers like me you can run in and say spoke to the homeowner and told them that someone from the office would be following up period and if you notice that we've got our note in there and this thing is really pretty cool oh, it's actually continuing to get me <laughs> so we get that pause that and save so we have that ability to do those kinds of things which uh, we think is pretty cool alright so uh, I'll go to my next screen run through here let me uh, hit my back button and get rid of that text-to-speech. I actually came all the way out of my ticket there. Let's go back in. All right, so going back here, my home screen, my detail, my notes, my systems and equipment that are actually installed at that customer site, my service history, and task. I don't know how many people use task, but these are pretty cool. Uh, let's say you're doing a pre uh, preventive maintenance, you can have the system pre-populate a list of tasks that you want your technicians to perform. And they would be on there, and then they would just go in and complete those tasks. I'm going to add, manually add a task. I'll say that it's for this piece of equipment. And here's the particular task. Let's say I'm checking fluids, and what was the result of my, it was, they were low. And now I might go in there then and add a comment, something to the effect of recommend that we do a leak check on that particular piece of equipment or whatever it may be. So that's a, that's a pretty cool feature we're excited about. Now this next one, I'm really excited. Unfortunately, I can't show you because I don't have any documents on this particular order. Um, but what we have the ability to do now is on the orders at the back office, uh, those that are using us know that we can attach documents. Well, any documents that are attached to that order will actually show up here. And they don't have, da have to download all these documents when they do a sync. They'll just be listed here, and then they can click on that document in order to open it up. But one thing, something that's even cooler is that attached to all of your items in your item master, your item list, your catalog that you have, you can attach documents. So any item that's on this ticket, those documents will also be listed here. So you could actually catalog all of your repair manuals and things like this. If a technician wanted to see a repair manual, he could very simply add that item code that matches the repair manual, pop back out over here, and then download it. And they download very, very quickly. They come down as PDF documents, and they'll open up within whatever um, you, uh, application you have associated with that on your local device. So remember, we're coming around here. We've detailed the ticket. We've gone through it, looked at our documents. We've ultimately, at the end of the day, we finished this thing off. So now we're going to go in. We want to get the customer's signature. And we can go ahead and, again, I can just tap and, excuse me, add a signature. It automatically goes to landscape mode. So I'll pop in. Put that. And then sign. So I've captured a signature. Now we have the ability to actually capture multiple signatures. So if for some reason you need to get a signature from a landlord, uh, you know, a tenant or a project manager, you can do that and accumulate. The other thing that you can do is if you went out today, you notice it's got today's date on it, but let's say you went back out tomorrow on the same ticket and you're getting these tickets signed off every day, you can actually handle that. You notice also that the system automatically rotates as I'm going through these different screens. All right, so I've got my tasks, my signatures. Now we're kind of coming into the money thing. First thing I might do is go out here and hit my dollars tab, see how much money they actually owe me. Well, we haven't done much out there that we're charging for at least. 
But those that use Avalara, which is a national uh, tax program that we had to face with, if they wanted Avalara to calculate that tax, it actually does this right now. It actually goes out and gets the real-time uh, tax information for that uh, basic uh, environment, uh, wherever they are there, comes back and syncs that back into the tis system and sets the tax uh, based off of those local tax rates when we're doing this. Watch this thing update. Close. And I'll go back to my totals. So I've got my, and actually, it, if you'll notice, it did calculate tax amount, even on that small amount of money. If Servant's calculating the tax, it would have already had the tax in there. All right, so now I'm going to go collect money. We take unlimited number of payments. You can take multiple check payments or multiple credit card payments against the one off order. Any payments that have been logged to this ticket, whether they were made through the back office before it was dispatched, will be listed here, and your total amount owed is going to be all listed down here. You notice it says total paid. So that's a nice, um, a really nice feature where everything's integrated. At the end of the day, we take our payments, and uh, I'll just point out this one icon. I've jumped over it. This is all the contacts that we know of, and we have the ability to add additional contacts from the field or edit these contacts while we're out there. Getting back to here, I'm all done now. I've collected my money. I just simply go in and I flip and I'm going to set my status on this particular ticket. I am done. That's going to automatically cause a sync in my current configuration. Push this back to the office, throw me back out to the main list and give me my next ticket.